Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss proof by contradiction and what I want to show, I want to show if I'm given a set and I know the cardinality of the set is zero or, or in other words the number of these elements is zero then I want to show that A is an empty set and how am I going to show this? I'm going to show this by using proof uh, by contradiction so what does mean proof by contradiction means? it means uh, Let's say, uh, what is direct proof? Direct proof, if I have proposition P, and from here implies proposition Q. So, uh, proof by contradiction, and let's say this P, B, C. So, proof by contradiction. It means I'm going to take my proposition P and negation of proposition Q. So, here, my proposition P is a cardinality of a is equals to zero and my proposition q is a is an empty set so uh, by means of proof by contradiction i'm giving and this arrow gonna indicate that i'm going to prove by contradiction that a cardinality of a equals to zero and my set a is not empty why it's not empty because uh, Q that my set is empty. So if my set is not empty, it means uh, oh, if it's negation of set is empty, it means my set is not empty. Okay, so this is our first line in proof by contradiction. So what are we are doing next? Uh, next, we want to open the statement. So we know that A is not empty. So what does it mean? A is not empty. It means I can find some element x. So we can say there is exist x belongs to A. No, no, there is exist element x such that x belongs to A. Yeah, so we're saying there exists an element, that element is a part of my A. And then I want to show a contradiction. How am I going to show the contradiction? Uh, I'm going to show by using inclusion exclusion principle. So how we show in inclusion exclusion principle? We know that if uh, we know, so I'm going to use this fact. If uh, set A and B are disjoint, so what does it mean disjoint? Disjoint means like that uh, their intersection is empty set. Then uh, I will get that cardinality of A union B is going to be just cardinality of A plus cardinality of B. So I'm going to use this fact. And why I'm going to use this fact? Because I'm going to create the following sets. Uh, I will take the set A minus... Oh, uh, before I'm going to say, I need to mention something. What I need to mention, I need to mention... If x belongs to A, then the subset that contains only one element x is a subset of my set A. So I'm going to use this principle, uh, this property. Not property, like I'm going to use it. X, I, I can think about my element x as a subset of my set A. And then I can create two sets A and B. So and what I will do, I will consider the first subset A minus element X union element X and here we're doing one assumption we're doing assumptions that our elements for example X, Y in set A cannot repeat so if I have element X, Y, X it just equals X, Y so I don't have any repetition in my set. Then you can see that uh, this uh, the union of A minus subset X union subset X are disjoint. And from here you can get that this is equal to uh, cardinality of A X plus cardinality of X. Yeah, you got. Because of the joints, the cardinality equal. 
But what do you, what we know about cardinality? We know uh, we're going to use another fact. We know if we have cardinality of some set C, this cardinality bigger equals than zero. Why? Because cardinality basically means how many elements do we have in our set. And we cannot have minus one element. Or do we? So it's a good thing, it's a good question to think about. So here I can say this is bigger or equal than uh, just cardinality of subset X. But I know it is my cardinality of subset X. A cardinality of subset X is exactly equals to 1. But what I get? I get that, uh, let's write this down like this. I get that my A equal A union X, oh sorry, A minus X, uh, X minus X union X equals to 1, uh, not equals to 1, is because it's bigger or equal, bigger than equals than 1. It's from one side, but from the other side, my cardinality of A is equals to 0. So what I actually get? I get that from here follows that 0 bigger or equal than 1. But this is contradiction, because 0 is never bigger than 1. Yeah, so from this point, I can say this contradiction. So, and we are done. So, our original assumption was false. So, this was false. So, this was false. So, it means this assumption is true. And we are done.